Forget the holy trinity. This is what I call my core four. Two compact F4 zooms to cover range with a fast prime at each end of normal. I'm ready to shoot almost anything, stay mobile, and retain some of that prime lens magic. And come on, who can afford a holy trinity in this economy? For a photo first shooter making some long form content, this works well enough. I've shot Canon RF since 2020, and I look at gear long term and in the context of what I already own on this channel. Let's do a quick rundown of these four before we get to the bodies, the other supporting gear, the brains of the operation, and other supporting lenses. Starting with the RF 24-105L, I've optimized for versatility, travel, and landscape. This lens I got as a kit with the RP, and it's the definition of that overall philosophy. I made the bet that I would build my kit around this lens, and so far, that's worked out pretty well for me. External zoom, but this keeps it compact. L-quality glass with weather sealing. I knew if I kept falling deeper into photography, I'd upgrade to a weather-sealed body later. A constant f4 aperture is nothing to get too, too excited about. This is kind of a boring lens, but pair this with a fast prime somewhere in the middle, and you've got a killer duo. Looking at the RF 70-200 f4, this is in the core 4 for all of the same reasons that the 24-105L lens is. Similar footprint, similar advantages, and when used together, 24-200mm to handles most shooting, and the 70-105mm to overlap is really nice in keeping you from swapping lenses too often. And that's particularly true if you like shooting that 85mm focal length as much as I like to. You could pair this lens with a wider, faster prime and you get another great duo, or if you're really trying to stay light when traveling and hiking, you can shoot those raw wides with your phone and just carry this lens. If I had to choose, this is probably my favorite lens, though last year I was spending a lot of time with the 100 to 400, and so I didn't use it quite as much in 2023. 2024 might be a huge release year for Canon, but as of now, there are still holes in the mirrorless lineup, and that's why I still have this EF mount holdout. But 28 millimeters is something I've really gravitated toward over the last year, coming from the RF 35mm macro. I use this as a poor man's compromise for an RF 15-35. to That's actually one of the Trinity lenses that probably does make sense for me even at this time, but a fast weather sealed 28 is great for talking head, it's great for astro, great for landscape, and it pairs really well with that 70-200 to in the meantime. And to round it out, the long prime, the Samyang 85 f1.4, and that's my light, fast, and weather sealed option as compared to something like the Canon RF 85 f2 macro. Macro, which I've used and it's a solid option as well, but for a similar price at the time, you could buy this new and I wanted that weather sealing in F1.4 magic. I use this a lot. I like the distance I can shoot from when hiking with others and I even like it for landscape stuff. It's not perfect, but because the RF mount has been locked down, there aren't other great affordable autofocus weather sealed options at the 85mm prime. And the brains of this core 4 operation, an OG R6 gripped up most of the time. Technically my third body after a Rebel and an RP, but in a lot of ways this feels like my first camera. It's got that damn, we've been through some stuff, haven't we little buddy, feeling. For the pros, we've got weather sealing, dual SD cards, IBIS, bigger batteries than the RP or R8, it can take a grip, has solid 4K, only a slight 4K60 crop, pretty fast stills rates in the mechanical and electronic shutter, and in my opinion, this is a really solid hybrid, particularly after some of the firmware updates in the recent years. Photo first shooters can probably find a great bargain on the Mark 1 in 2024. There are a few downsides, mostly for video shooters though. 20 megapixels hasn't really bothered me at all until I started using the 100 to 400. I'd love a little bit more to play around with when using this lens or maybe the 70 to 200. Otherwise, this isn't something that I personally hold against this camera too much. If I imagine a long-term two-body solution for myself, it probably involves having a lower 20 megapixel sensor and something a little bit higher. You've got some rolling shutter, definitely noticeable in video, and I notice it in photos as well when shooting sports. We are stuck with the 30 minute record limit so far with this camera and it's probably not gonna get removed. And this does seldomly overheat. Think something like 90 Fahrenheit shooting 4K 60 clips amongst photos I have had this shut off on me, I think just once. So unfortunately, you can definitely get it there. Even in room temp with the grip on at 4K24, Canon will start to lower your expected record time after the initial 30 minute limit. You can usually go past this, but there's no way around it. This camera isn't really meant for long form recording, at least not internally. 
But if you're a photographer only, you're never really going to encounter some of these downsides at all. And if you're a full-time videographer, you know, I'm not really in that world. I probably wouldn't mess with the Mark I. I think the Mark II handles a lot of this stuff better, but I haven't used it personally and still maybe not the best camera for you. So that's the core four and the brains. As we get into the supporting cast members now, the Canon R8 is fantastic. And for photographers, it's one of the best things that Canon has done on the mirrorless rollout, in my opinion. It's basically an R6 II and an RP body, and I've seen it as low as $1,299. There are obviously some big cuts. No IBIS, one card, small battery, but this is leaps and bounds over the RP, particularly if you're shooting 4K video and want great autofocus, or you're shooting high stills rates. I'm going to part ways with mine in a few months by design, unfortunately. As much as I love it, it's a bit too similar to the R6 for me long term. I'd love to play around with two contrasting bodies, but it's been an excellent second camera for the period where I was shooting a ton. I've used it for the main shot on almost all of the content you see here or on the pod since the summer because it doesn't have that record limit like the R6. Just make sure that you grab one additional battery I think everybody's gonna need it with this camera, even if you're a photo only shooter. For the rest of my lenses, I suppose I'll call them non core, but I still shoot them a ton. In this category, we've got the RF Nifty 50, the RF 100 to 400, and the RF 28 millimeter pancake, as the 35 millimeter macro has recently departed. Now, I've kind of insulted my 50 millimeter by calling it non core, as I can't imagine many scenarios where I move that along. I use it a lot, and it's pretty sentimental to me because I purchased it with. AdSense from this channel. It's cheap, small, fast, has many strengths for many shooters, and it pairs really well with either of Canon's 24 to 105s or really any mid-range zoom because it's a faster, more compact option. Slower than the 50 and costing twice as much, there are similar advantages to the 28 millimeter pancake, which I'm filming this on right now, just on the wider end and absolutely tiny. Match made in heaven with the R8, this combo becomes a really compelling, really capable on the go package. Despite how awesome, I obviously have some overlap here with the Sigma myself. And with the heft of that lens plus the adapter, the size between the two lenses couldn't be more different. I like the option of the F1.4 on the Sigma and I tend to shoot this lens wide open quite often. I obviously dig the weather ceiling on this lens for travel. And then the RF 100 to 400 is a lens that I shot pretty heavily in 2023. Wanted to challenge myself, jump into some of that longer lens shooting and see how I could edit my images to try to make the most and get the most out of a lens like this. I got this Canon refurb. And if you don't own a long lens, I think it's hard to make a case for a lens that's a better value for dollar play. This and the Nifty 50 are neck and neck. But if you've watched some of my other videos around this lens, I have some hesitations around committing to this long term. If I'm going to pack this on a flight for a longer trip, then I really want the weather ceiling. I don't love the focal length overlap with my 70 to 200, given how much smaller and relatively brighter that lens is. And I feel I want more reach than 400 millimeters on a full frame. And the only catch is that to get some of the features on my wish list here, You've got to open that wallet nice and wide and let Canon get their little paw in there. Not to mention everything else is bigger and heavier, so that's why I'm torn. Let's do a speed round to look at other supporting gear that I own before we look at future plans. I was a yearly swapper with GoPro when I used them on my helmet for hockey. I do less of that now. I'm still rocking a Hero 9, but I like mounting them in the hot shoe and using the B-roll as I shoot uh, for this channel specifically. I'm a once every three to four year buyer on phones, and get the Pro model at that time. This 14 Pro I'm using as a wide prime shooting raw. Moments case works great for me. I love their MagSafe tripod mount, and I'll probably shoot a good bit with this in 2024 before the battery life starts to make that less enjoyable. And I know I talked about the R6 being the brains, but the real brains, the M series chips are the real deal here. This is a 16 inch M2 Max with 32 gigs of RAM, probably overkill for photo editing only, but I'm also doing a lot of multi-track 4K video editing as well. So I'm liking the headroom that I have now with it. And I'm counting on this puppy for the next three to four years. I really like using Lightroom on this machine. It's a lot to lug, but at the same time, 16 inches is big enough that I can typically get away without using a monitor. And even when I have one set up on the desk, I'm often using it without plugging it in. And then the other category of stuff that's often with me is a filter case. I really like the Nomadic McKinnon filter case. It holds 77 millimeter and 82 millimeter filters nicely. I prefer the Cine Blooms from Bloom and then use the Polar Pro ones for a VND mist, CPL, 
and I love the quality of their step-up rings. I just like this layout and overall size because it fits nicely in my bag. And speaking of bags, the F-Stop Ajna is the bag I use most often right now. I love the ecosystem, the weatherproofing, and configurability options. If you want to dive deep here, I'll link my previous reviews. Looking at the future, I don't need to make any moves right now. I feel like I have a solid mix for photo-first shooting, one that's travel-friendly, and at the moment with the R8 in hand, it's a good combo for making long form content as well. Now I still have some wants. I'm interested in settling on something for the long end. It might be this. I'm interested in one of the L quality primes. I've tried the 85s, they're a bit tanky for me, uh, but the quality is incredible. And I could go for playing with some high resolution shooting. None of those are urgent. I can fill those holes with Canon. If Canon's dragging their feet, I can fill them elsewhere. But either way, I expect the R6 and the Core 4 to continuously be the biggest part of my kit for the foreseeable future.